Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Finty Photo, and this time Radial Blur. Where can you find it? Unfortunately, it's not available via the a layer and new life filter layer. There is no radial blur. It'd be really nice if there was. However, you can find it in filters, blur, and radial blur. And that's a destructive effect. If it had been in the new life filters, you would have seen a non-destructive effect. However, radial blur. Straight away, get the panel always pops down to the bottom. <laughs> I'm not certain why. It'd be nice if they put it up a bit closer to the middle. However, what you can do, you can change the angle. You can see there you've got the, so you can put it on a very low, subtle, you can just see just the radial blur there. And obviously the center is fairly untouched. Now obviously you push it up greater and you can push it up to say like 90, 180 and basically just get rings, a ring design there. Now you can't, I don't, let's try it. 270, you push it up, no, 180 is the max and you go back down to zero. Also what you can do, you can move the origin point. So you can see you do that, you can move it backwards and forwards, and it's great for creating some very unusual color designs using just any image actually, not just the image I've got. And once you've done that, you can click apply. And that's it. However, what you can also do, there's a lot more you can do with radial blur, you can of course apply it more than once. It's always good just to go back to filters and maybe go to blur and radial blur again, apply it maybe twice, maybe apply it subtly, then maybe subtle again. But before I do that, I'm just gonna go to a layer menu and there's a fade radial blur option. So you can see the original image and you can fade it in or out. And also you've got blending modes as well. So you can run through a number of blending modes. And you can create some very interesting blending mode effects, difference, and so on. And divide. Like that. So there's always the option to fade it as well. So now, as mentioned, what you can do, filters, blur, and radial blur. Instead of obviously applying it, with that great 180, you can like just subtle, and you can move, say, the origin up there, apply. You can also go to filters, of course, and apply it again. Now, you could just repeat it again, again, and again, again, perfectly reasonable. But what you can do, go to blur, and of course, radial blur again, and you can see you can apply it in a different part of the image, and maybe apply it more subtle, over there. So you can get, different sort of blurs in different places. Perfectly reasonable as well. So undo there. Also what you can do, you can use it on layers. So go over here to the layers and you can find all these via view and the studio. Layers and channels are very useful panels here. So what you can do, go to a layer and duplicate. And then I'm just gonna resize this a bit. So just see there. And you can, of course, rotate it around. And then what you can do, you can again go and apply a blur. So filters, blur, and radial. And you can see the effect applied to there. And you can extend it out beyond the region, right over there, or right over there, and so on and so on. And you can, of course, make it very extreme to the point where you literally cannot see it. Just a subtle, very subtle. I'm just gonna reduce it down to maybe about 9.5 there. So you can see the effect there, apply. Obviously it's going to take a bit of time, but, and then it of course extends the region and also just a bit of processing, obviously depending on the size of the image, and you can of course then move it around, hold Alt or Option key down, always duplicate the design, and you can add multiple copies across the image. And you can see you can create some very interesting color effects doing that. Now what I'm going to do, undo that, and I'm going to remove that layer. Next thing, just going to run, you can also use channels. Channels are great, so you can go to channels, and instead of using the red, green, and blue, you can just use red, say. Just go over here, channels again, that's in the view and studio. So click there, and you can go to filters, blur, radial blur. So you can set it maybe up there, maybe apply that, click apply. 
Now you can go to the composite green, you see it's totally untouched. What you can then do, go to filters. You could, of course, repeat it again, perfectly reasonable. Blur, and then radial blur. And of course, you could apply other effects. Don't have to always just keep applying radial blur. You can combine them as well. So put that down there. See that? And then go to the blue and filters and blur and radial blur and maybe down there. And again, vary the setting if you want, apply. Once you've finished, you can always go up here and you can put it back to RGB. And you can see, you can get this really more interesting design with blur there, blur there, and the blur there. Now I'm just gonna undo that. Go back to, now I've got that layer there. What you can also do, before I go further, with a layer, just send it up. What you can also do, you can of course do filter and distort and deform. So maybe deform it. So really sort of distort it in all kinds of different ways. Like that. And you've got your design there. Of course, you can reduce it down. And you can see instead of just a, a rectangular layer, but also what you can do, you can still apply a radial blur to that. So filters, blur, and radial blur. And you can see the design there. So you just sort of, and again, you can modify the origin point of that blur effect. So you can create some very interesting, say maybe just the end point there, click apply. And again, the effect obviously takes a few seconds to put. <laughs> yeah, it's done it. Oh, and it's still got a little, uh, have to wait for the panel to appear and disappear. And you can do this, of course, with any filter. I've obviously used Deform, but you can obviously use maybe Mirror to create a very interesting design and then apply the radial blur to that. And it will do it. <laughs> so sometimes radial blur is not the quickest, obviously, of filters. It's done. Right. So you've got that design there and you can see the design. And of course you can again hold down the alter option key and you can duplicate the design there and rotate it and much, much more to create a very abstract design like that. Now, I'm just gonna go back. Actually, I'm gonna remove that now. Now, what you can also do, you can use selections. Now you can use a standard selection, you can use that, or maybe go to the select menu over here and use one of the selections there. But I'm just gonna use freehand. So simply just create a quick selection. Now it doesn't have to be, yeah, there it is. Oh, it took a few seconds to appear. What you can also do, you can go to add and subtract as well. So add, so you can add it in a different area. And there. So you can do that. Go to filters and blur, radial blur, and you can see the effect is only applied in that area. And again, still modify the origin point, which could be further off or outside of the selections as well. Apply to that. Or you can, of course, go to select and you can invert and then blow to filters, blur, and obviously, strange enough, the same thing, radial blur. And you can see that's now untouched. And you can see all kinds of different effects can be created there. Click apply. Just going to remove those. Also, of course, you can use radial blur with many other objects as well. So I'm just going to go through. You can, of course, use it to great effect with gradients, but you can also use shapes. So I'm just going to go to a shape and I'm just going to select one of them donut, donut tool. So I've just select donut tool, maybe change the color, go for red. Now, with that selected, what you can do, you can go to filters again, blur, and Radial blur, strange. And then it will, little assistant will pop up there so you can see it's been converted to a pixel layer. Can't work on a vector, so it's, this is the destructive effect as I've mentioned. And then you can of course modify the origin point as well as the actual effect, so you can make it more intense. And then you can just, so you can see you can create some very, very unusual designs here. Click apply. And of course what you can also do, you can apply it to two or three. So you don't have to just apply it to one and you can change the color of that one. 
hopefully not. Let's just which I think I'll just go and create a different shape other than using that. Just want to show you. Let's go for uh, I don't know, come on, that's it. Sometimes when I double click that, often it just doesn't appear. Don't know why. So I'm very sluggish today. Trapeze and then thank you. Right. So I've got those two, all those three shapes. What you can do, you can go to filters and blur and radial blur again. You see the radial blur effect, and again you can change that position. But you'll notice straight away that it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked on that one because it needs to be turned into. It's just weird. You think that because you selected them all, it would apply it to all of it. No, it doesn't do that. Don't know why, however. Layer, and you can go to Merge Selected. So you can just pre-do it. So you, you're telling it there's this design. I want it to be applied to the whole lot. So Filters, Blur, of course, Radial Blur. And now you can see the effect applied there. And of course, what you can also do, you've got this design, it's a standard layer. So apply, you've got this design, layers. You can always, again, hold down the ultra option key and duplicate and create some very unusual color effects applied on top. And of course, what's also available, you notice that because I went over the edge, you have to avoid the edges. With the radial blur, it just be cut off, which is, doesn't always look so good. But of course, the thing is with layers, you've also got the option for different blend modes. So if you want to, you can go for difference, exclusion, or divide, those sorts of things. So you can see you can create some very interesting glowing effects and designs like that. Now I'm just going to remove all that. And that can be done with any shape. So it's not just, just the one shape. Right. Finally, I'm just going to go to type. So you've just got some aerial and then you go with artistic type, just type something. A oh, bit too big. Decided to disappear. Doesn't like too large. So I'm just going to quickly go reduce that down. Oh, yes, <laughs> that's the reason. 750. That's probably quite large. So let's just go for something a bit smaller than that. I wonder why it was just suddenly vanishing. So click there. That's what I want. Now, what you can do, you've got the A there. Now I could, of course, have changed the color, gone with a different color. But I'm going to go to filters, of course, blur and radial blur again. And would you set it down there? So you can blur, and you can see the A there is just rotated very like that. And again, you can change your origin points. So you can create some very unusual. And that can be used also with frame text as well. Doesn't have to be artistic text. You can distort that again. Also, you've still got the option of fade layer and fade radial blur as well. So you can add that into it as well. So you can just fade it and use blending modes, difference, though, of course, being black, not so useful, divide, and so on. So obviously, <laughs> with that one, it doesn't have much result. So you've got your design there. And again, hold down the ultra option key and fill the screen with lots of slightly blurred A's. Well, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials about Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Publisher, Photoshop, Illustrator. Also, please add some comments. Always appreciate it. Something, anything that I did wrong, please point it out. Always happy to hear. Also, what things I did right, always nice as well. Also, a dislike or like. Also, please subscribe to Graphic Extra channel always be great for that and thank you much